So welcome back. In this episode, I want to continue my analysis of the Karateka Cheat Disc by Jordan Mechner and uploaded to the Internet Archive by Jason Scott. In the last episode, I showed you how to get to different cheat keys. And in this episode, I'm going to show you how I actually found those cheat keys. So what we're going to do is we're going to use two different software packages. The first is the Virtual 2 emulator on the Mac, and we're going to use that to actually diagnose where in the assembly code the keystrokes are. All right, so the game's about to start, and what I'm going to do, this is Virtual 2. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring up the inspector, and I know that I'm looking for keyboard events. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a breakpoint for an IO address and I could set this for reading the keyboard but I don't want to do that because that actually will just get it when it's just checking for any keystroke. What I really want to do is set it for when it clears the keyboard strobe because this is where I've already hit a key and it's going ahead and clearing it. So I'll do that and you can see we've actually already hit a keystroke and here it is, it's at 6EA3. So if I just go ahead and let's see, so that seems to be the one that we're looking for. And if we scroll up a little bit in this, we can actually find up here on 6E66, there's a load accumulator of C000, and this is reading the keyboard. So now let's see if I actually put a breakpoint somewhere near here, if we actually hit it. So here we're checking to see if there's a keyboard event. If there's not, so the branch and plus, then we'll go back and we'll go somewhere else. So we're just gonna put a breakpoint right here afterward so that we know we've hit a key. And then I'm gonna turn off my C010 breakpoint because we don't wanna hit that every single time. We'll hit resume. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit K for keyboard. And you can see we immediately hit that breakpoint. So now we sort of have an idea of where in the Karateka assembly keyboard events are handled. And so now what we want to do is we actually want to find a better way to actually disassemble the assembly code because while this is fine, it doesn't actually let us do anything like add comments to the code. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dump the memory for this game and we will dump it into a disk image and we'll dump it into a binary file and we'll call this Karateka cheat dump bin okay and I'm gonna dump all the memory okay and then we're gonna switch gears and we're gonna use a program called Omnivore and this was written by Rob McMullen and a couple other people at the player missile podcast and this is a great editor and it's available for both Windows and Mac and it actually lets you load up Atari and Apple 6502 disk images or raw binary dumps and then analyze them and look at the code. So if we just open up our file that we've just written out, okay, here it is. And so you can see that on the left-hand side, we just have the hex. In the middle, we have a bitmaps a bitmap view of all of those hex characters. Then we have a representation of the ASCII characters. And finally, on the right-hand side, we have the disassembly for the 6502. So what we can do is we can actually tell it that this is an Apple II rather than Atari. And so you can see that it changed it all to Apple II based. So we're not gonna need the character map or the bitmap. So we'll just get rid of those for right now. And we also, want to make sure that it is just straight 6502 instead of 65CO2 uh, because the Karateka game was written before the 65CO2 was actually even out. So here's our code and we can actually scroll down now to 6E6B. You will see, okay, here it is. 
So here's the load accumulator with C000. And one nice thing about the Omnivore editor is it actually puts in comments for locations that it knows about. So for example, it knows that C000 is the keyboard. You can see down here, here's the C010, that's the strobe. Uh, so that's really nice. And then what you can do is once you actually know what a command does or a line of code, you can actually put in your own comments and save them. So for example, I can go here and click on this line, add comment, and I'll say no key and say okay, and then it puts it in there. You can see the next line of code. Here's a compare with E0. So this is just checking in case we have a lowercase character that was typed. Uh, if there wasn't, if it wasn't lowercase, then it jumps over here. If it was lowercase, it subtracts 20 hex or 32 to make it uppercase. And then we just start looking for characters. So here we're comparing against an A0. And if we look on our Beagle Brothers ASCII value table, an A0 is a space character. So this is handling the space key. So for example, I could put in a comment for that. So add comment space bar. And I've gone ahead and done this already. And I'll, so I'll go ahead and I'll actually open up the one that I've created before. So the nice thing is you can actually edit the code, add lots of comments, and then share this with somebody else. And then they can add their own comments. So for example, here we are in this section here. Uh, you can see I've already found out where it handles keys like left arrow, right arrow. Uh, here's the punch keys, Q, A, and Z. Here's the kick keys. And then when I kept analyzing all this code, I found another block, which, oh, here's a jump table. So that's interesting. I haven't actually fully analyzed this, so I don't know what's going on there. That's at address 7,000. But if we keep going down, we'll eventually get to another section of keyboard events where it's handling kind of like special keys like all of your control keys um, and this is where actually where i found the special keyboard cheats so here we are we're around line 76 ab in the assembly and the control left bracket which is the same as the escape key that pauses the game there's control s for turning the sound on and off uh, there's a bunch of things to flip the joysticks, which we don't really care about. Uh, here's switching from joystick to keyboard mode. Uh, control R is return to demo. Finally, here's a, a new one. This is uh, control D. And like I explained in the previous video, this is the one that's death to enemies. And so this is reduces your enemy to one hit point. And then the other cheat key that I found was control right bracket, which advances to the next level. And you can see that I've started trying to figure out how does this work. If you hit control right bracket, then we're loading the accumulator with whatever's in D0, which I'm guessing is some sort of level counter uh, because it's actually incrementing it. And then we're jumping to some code over on 200. So just to confirm that this is actually the right location, let's go back to virtual two and we'll actually put in a breakpoint. So we'll switch back over here turn off this breakpoint and then go to 7756 there it is 7756 put a breakpoint right there we will resume now i will hit control right bracket boom and we hit that breakpoint so sure enough that's the location for handling that key and then if we wanted to we could go ahead and we could just keep going step into to trace through what does that actually do? You can easily see that with a combination of Virtual 2 and an editor like Omnivore, it's really simple to take apart assembly language programs on the Apple II and figure out how they work and perhaps make some modifications. Uh, I'd like to keep disassembling Karateka and hopefully figure out what all those jump tables do and maybe make some fun mods to the game. And But I think I'll just leave that for another episode. Uh, if you have any questions about using Omnivore or Virtual 2, please feel free to leave questions in the comments. But otherwise, I'll just see you next episode. Thanks for watching.